Marvel Media Podcast, where we talk about all things media, especially Marvel. I'm Blake, and I'm here with my co-host, Alex. And welcome to Episode 7 of Marvel Talk. Today, we'll be discussing the newest Marvel trailer that dropped just yesterday as of this recording, that being Moon Knight, the newest Marvel show that will be available to stream March 30th, later this year, on Disney+. Plus. So, let's just talk about it. So, I mean, right off the bat very excited for this this definitely has a different feel and look compared to other marvel projects that we've seen um using kid cuddy's day and night for the music in the background that edited was so good that was, that was amazing. fire i was like mm. like at first i was like wait a minute is, is are they using like snippets of, of cuddy's like song and like oh shit and it's like it didn't just it wasn't just there at the beginning it, they were actually like layering it and it was following like the trailer because when he was like looking for the phone about like halfway through it was like i i forget, I forget the lyric but it was saying on the phone on the phone and, it's, and, and it, it kind of was like trippy i was like damn okay I, that was a, that was pretty clever pretty yeah they cool, made like trailer. a full edit of that song just for the trailer and like synced it up it was it was really cool and i liked that a lot um so just some quick little background stuff i guess we can give about moon knight for a lot of people who probably don't know about him because to be honest i don't know much about him either he's a relatively smaller character in the mcu um and if we're being 100 percent honest he was basically just marvel's in a way response to batman and dc that's sort of what his whole thing was but a little bit different when he was created so uh the main character in this will be played by oscar isaac as we saw and um, that's already off the bat. It gets a little confusing because you hear him at the museum say his name is Stephen, which is probably going to be Stephen Grant. And then on the phone, somebody calls and says, oh, you're alive, blah, blah, and says the name Mark. And he's like, wait, why did you call me Mark? So that's probably going to be Mark Spector. And then we see him transform into Moon Knight, potentially. So the whole thing around the Moon Knight character is... It's a person who has a dissociative identity disorder. And that's why there's him thinking, oh, he said, like, my name's Steven. But then another time, Mark is probably his other one. In the comics, he has three um, identities. Steven Grant, Mark Spector, and then one that we didn't get to hear was Jake Lockley, I believe. And um, each of them kind of have their own lives, I guess. Um if anyone's seen the movie Split that came out a few years ago with James McAvoy, that was a movie based on dissociative identity disorder. That one was obviously very much dramatized as I think he had like 23 or 22 different yeah, 20 personalities. Something. Yeah, it was it in the 20s. It, yeah, and it kept on growing. Right. So in this, in the comics, he really only has two or three are the main ones that um we have here. So Yeah, and I think the main, main one is normally Mark. Right, and uh, that's Mark Spector, who in comics and stuff, he's a mercenary. He was in the army, and then after that, he kind of went off and did his own thing, just being a mercenary. So he has good hand-to-hand -hand skills, you know, good with guns, that kind of life. And then, like we said, one that wasn't mentioned, which we might see, is Jake Lockley, who I believe is just a cab driver. And then we have um, Stephen Grant, who is just basically works at, like, a gift shop in the comics it seems like um it looks like in this one he works at a museum um and this is based in london and one of the things i saw was people were kind of tearing the trailer apart was they're saying how his accent was not good like he has a british accent there's some thoughts that it's on purpose because that might just be one of his identities as british but the other ones aren't yeah so that's why it may be bad because if it's say it's the stephen grant identity that one has a British accent. It's obviously not going to be good because he's not British right. compared to his Mark Spector, who may just have a normal like American accent. So, I mean, this show is going to be very confusing, I think, which is going very to be trippy. fun. It's going to be a ride for all of us because I think they're going to play with the whole idea of he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what's reality, what's happening, what's not. And we're going to see it through his eyes, so we're going to be in that same feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And we're pretty much going to experience it along with him, which right. is a, a, a very, you know, cool way to, to tell a story. 
right? Which we already saw in the trailer. He talks about how he has this sleeping disorder where he doesn't know when exactly he's awake and when he's asleep, which could be connected to this dissociative identity disorder because when he switches from one identity to another, he basically blacks out and completely forgets what that identity was doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why he may not know. Just because of his disorder, he was awake as, say, Mark Spector. All of a sudden, he switched to if he has a Jake Lockley or if it is just Steven, just those two. He has no idea what just happened. So I think we're all going to kind of follow along with him in that and be kind of guessing on what's happening. Is he sleeping? Is he awake? Is this an identity? Which, as we saw in the quick little trailer, we saw there was plenty of times where he was looking in a mirror and either he walked away from the mirror and the mirror stayed with like him and just like a bunch of stuff like that of him not even knowing that he can like he can't even trust himself in a way he can't trust reflections yeah it's it's some weird shit it's gonna it's gonna be very trippy and uh yes. it's gonna lean more in, in, into that like supernatural side of the mcu that is i think just beginning you know especially with blade out there um black knights out there you know um, potentially Ghost Rider down the line, they might be setting up, you know, Midnight Suns in the MCU. Which they also are kind of looking like they're going a more darker. Because throughout this trailer, really, there was no point that there was any sort of comic relief at any point in these. Like, I can't, I didn't remember a single joke in the trailer. It seems like it's very much a it was darker, kind of serious tone. I think the only time was like when he was like in that elevator and then he, then he was like saying, oh no, I just dropped the contact lens and I lost it. Right. But even then, I don't think it was played for laughs. I, th I think it's just like, cause him, it was just him playing off the situation. Right. And it wasn't really meant as a funny for the audience. You're right. And it comes off that way, which is, which is actually probably what they wanted, but it's, it's, it kind of, it comes out of fear, you know, cause he was terrified there. And then that that very horrific, uh, you know, feeling then all of a sudden leaves you and then it's kind of a sense of relief. And then that relief then becomes kind of like and then that, that can then cause like some like um, a lot of ways that people kind of, you know, cope or I don't know if cope is the right word, but, you know, kind of like play off, you know, just right. being frightened is like to kind of uh, not throw a joke, but like just like laugh so, like suddenly yeah exactly right no i definitely agree and um along with you saying how they are this is tying in more that supernatural type feel to the mcu it also seems like we're gonna kind of get our first feel of like almost horror or more of that feel to this like as, creepy factor yeah right because you know marvel has been very lighthearted, which is more of what marvel is compared to like dc comics for example but it sounds like they're kind of trying to introduce us to, in a way, have a little bit of a scarier feel as it's expected or believed that uh, Doctor Strange is going to be almost a horror film in a way. It's been said several times and it's Sam Raimi's horror directing elements. it. Right. And Sam Raimi's directing it. And if you saw the original Spider-Man, there was definitely a couple like Green Goblin had like a jump scare at a point when um, they tried to saw off Doc Ock's tentacles in the second one. Yeah. That whole scene was like basically taken out of a slasher or a horror film in a way. So I would expect Doctor Strange is going to have that. And I feel like this is the MCU kind of introducing us to that. Which is good. I mean, honestly, it's it's, it's always good to get kind of like different feel. You know, I, it can all still be MCU. But, you know, um, I, I think what I like most about, you know, certain films in the MCU is that, uh, you know, they, they kind of they're not the same formula, you know, kind of um, when, when they start throwing in different subgenres in there, um, like Winter Soldier became kind of a like more spy thriller. Uh, and then Thor Ragnarok was a huge like divert from, from the first two. And, and it was like a nice, you know, fr fresh, fresh air. So um, I, I honestly appreciate that they're kind of now going into this more like darker tone, kind of more um closely feeling more like the like netflix the daredevil show you know kind of you know more down to earth more serious 
um you know there there was still laughs in there too obviously but you know like the overall themes and tones of everything it definitely feels a little more uh dark and a little, a little more um uh gloomy not not as all like bright and you know cracking jokes left and right either so um yeah i i appreciate when you know i'm getting a bunch of um variety of all different things and and it's nice because uh that's just the way the, the world is in real life you know it's everyone's different you know we're, we're getting a, a sense of you know everything um everyone has you know different likes different di dislikes um but that's what makes it interesting you know because you know if it was the same thing it'd just get kind of bland over time but when you start throwing in uh d different stuff yeah, it, it can get pretty interesting. Um, so for sure, I I am excited to see where 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 this is going. And um, of course, I mean, nothing against any of of the other you know um, more lighthearted movies. Those are still going to have us you know their own place. Um, but it's definitely a welcoming feeling when it comes to these darker tone uh, shows and potentially movies. So so yeah, I I am excited for them. No, I definitely agree that. This is, in a sense, a breath of fresh air for Marvel to hopefully they are venturing into this darker, more serious tone, maybe even more gra graphic, as we saw with um, the end of the trailer as him beating up a monster, which we'll probably get a little bit more into that in a little bit. But And just uh, at one point he has, when he's himself, he's not in the Moon Knight character, he has a gun in his hand and it looks like he just shot somebody. So his hand was all bloody. He was all right. confused. He's like, what the hell's going on? He throws the gun. Yeah. Right. So it definitely is nice that Marvel's not afraid to hopefully this is going to be a little bit darker, more serious, which it makes sense when you're putting in a character here who has this kind of disorder. I mean, it makes sense that you have to be a little bit more serious at times because that's just reality. I mean, I'm sure anybody who has these disorders they would tell you that it is not just, you know, a laughing matter at all times, that they have very serious moments. So it's kind of nice that Marvel is respecting that in a way and making this, you know, a very serious at time kind of feel. So plus, I mean, it just closely matches the source material. It wouldn't right. make much sense if you, you know, went a whole different, you know, tone with with a character like this. And I, I think that's probably why they're, they're they're starting to do this because they want to plan on, on making this kind of team of, you know, heroes or anti-heroes um, that have this same kind of uh, feel, you know, kind of like Blade. Blade, the, the movies were rated R, like the original ones. So, um, yeah, this is definitely going to be like a stepping stone. Um, right. Potentially when it, when it comes to going in that direction. So. So, another thing to kind of just talk about real quick is the little bit of background on the actual character of Moon Knight. So, in the comics, Mark Spector is on a mission in Egypt. He gets left behind basically for dead. He's around temples and pyramids and Egyptian type stuff where he meets one of the like statues, comes to life, and it's of the Egyptian god, I believe it's pronounced... Khonshu, yep, that's right. which is the god of the moons um, or moon and basically gives Mark the ability of I'll save you your life right now because you could have died out there um, but you have to serve as like basically a vessel of justice for me is kind of like the deal they make so that's where he gets his powers and his suit are supernatural they come from this god and basically in a way, you can almost say he's, I mean, this is kind of a way to whatever is, he's almost like a werewolf. His powers will only happen at night when the moon's around. And depending on the moon affects his powers. So if it's, say, a full moon, he's basically, in a way, fully charged. His powers and abilities are full. If it's just like a half moon or something, he still has those powers. They're just not as amplified. Um... And I mean, to be honest, his powers are basically just super strength. And during that time, he's kind of immortal in a way, um, or invincible, I guess. He has died before, but the god brings him back to life and resurrects him, if that's happened in the comics. So 
Yeah, he, basically at nighttime, he just has super strength. Yeah, he's pretty much like Cap, but like really fucked up in the head. Right, which is why that whole his um, Mark Spector being a mercenary kind of ties in because from that lifestyle, he's got you know good hand to hand combat skills. He is good with guns, weapons, all that stuff. So then at night, you just take that personality, give him a dope suit, give him super strength. Invulnerability. And a crazy disorder and just say, you're my vessel for justice, basically, was the God says. So then he goes around and is like a vigilante just punishing people in the name of this God. Yeah. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Like I said, um, he basically was made almost as a response to Batman. Batman was doing so good for DC mm-hmm. and Marvel basically saw this whole vigilante crime fighter at night and said, we'll make one. We'll just switch it up some way. So they gave him dissociative identity disorder and he got his power supernaturally he actually has powers he also fights in all white which is a big thing in the comics yeah because he wants them to know that he's yeah. coming yeah he wears all white because he wants the smoke at all times <laughs> like there's several lines in the comics of him mentioning the white of i want them to see me coming and i'm trying to think the other i saw another quote about him that he mentioned about why he was wearing all white but it's basically, he wants all the smoke possible. He does not want to hide from you. He wants you to see him coming. Because he knows that you can't do anything about it. it. Right. You're just, you're going to lose. He's going to get you. So. I think the kind of big bad, I guess you could say. I don't know. Personally, with the shows, I'm getting tired of the same formula. Who is the big bad? all episodes were guessing who's going to be the big bad who's it going to be and then like the second to last episode they're like oh it's this person and then we have a finale with the big bad and then it's done i'm kind of over that i hope they switch it up here we know who it is pretty much right off the bat and we get several like the daredevil marvel show was on netflix we knew it was kingpin he had run-ins with other people around kingpin but personally i hope it's not like the whole who's it going to be who's it going to be for five six episodes and then it's like oh You have one episode with them and then it's over. See you later. So, I don't know. This one is giving me a little hope because we have seen um, Ethan Hawke was in this. uh, It was confirmed his name is going to be Arthur Harrow. In the comics, Arthur Harrow is a very minor who I think shows up in like only two or three comic book issues of Moon Knight. Yeah, but but they might uh, change it like his origin slightly because I think he's going to be like a kind of a cult leader. Um, and you yes. can, you can kind of see that in there and you know, that kind of just adds to the whole tone of everything and you can tell Absolutely. Ethan, Ethan Hawke Absolutely. is both, both actors are, you know, really, really good actors. So I, I don't, Any, I this is what I have to say about Ethan Hawke. If some people out there are worried about him being a villain or whatever, watch the trailer for his new movie that's coming out soon. Ah, oh, man. What's the name? We saw the preview at, I think Halloween kills or Halloween ends. It's like the black phone book or the something like that. Watch that trailer in that Ethan Hawke plays the villain just from the trailer. The movie isn't even out yet. He's going to be an amazing villain. The black phone. That's what it is. He's going to be an amazing villain because just from that trailer alone, I don't even want to see that movie. I was honestly a little scared. I was like, okay, this looks intense. Settle down. Yeah. 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 So it, it, he's it going to kill the role. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is. Oh wow, interesting. Uh, it's a fact here. The the Black Phone is directed by Scott Derrickson, who directed the first Doctor Strange, and yes, it does star Ethan Hawke, and it will be coming out June twenty fourth later this year. So, yes, in case anyone probably was interested, probably won't see it. It is honest, probably won't see it. It looked a little scary for me. Yeah. Not gonna, I mean, not scary in that sense, but it, he does a great job. That's all. Said. Um. So, like Alex said, he is playing more of a cult leader. Um, you can see in the trailer, he had a bunch of people following and at one point they all bow down to him when we see Oscar Isaac was there. We don't know as who exactly, but he was kind of lost with everybody bowing. So potentially he could be some kind of cult leader that's drawing people in that either have some kind of terminal illness or, uh, you know, he has uh, some kind of dissociative identity disorder as some kind of, you know, cult leader of like, oh, I can heal you. Come to me and dedicate your life to me and I'll heal you of this. So. That could be kind of the theme we're going on. Um, I don't know if they're going to go this way. I'm just going to throw it out there just so 
if it happens, we can go back on this video and I can say I was right. Um, he could potentially be the sun god, who basically he gets his powers from Amin Ra, I believe is the name yep. of the the sun god of the Egyptian sun god. Um, and if that's true, if he becomes a sun god character from the powers that I've seen, as I said, I don't really know Moon Knight that well, so I've kind of had to do research. Um, he basically can kind of like create flames out of anywhere as well as like basically catch himself on fire and not take any kind of damage or any burn marks from that so as well as he potentially could be bipolar so those are just a couple things just to throw out there that could potentially come up in the show yeah, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to have uh, different dynamics. You know, obviously there's always going to be that, you know, superhero feel to it. But, you know, it's going to have like uh, elements of the, of the supernatural. Um, it's going to deal a lot with uh, mental health and, and illness. Um, and, and supernatural beings. Yeah. So it's 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 going to it's definitely going to be um, some trippy and um, I think some enlightening stuff in there. Obviously, Marvel does. Uh, does not shy away from you know obviously it's 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 their character and everything like that but they always want to have some some underlying thing um, or theme in there um, so I mean if if there was ever any sort of uh, character or or project that Marvel uh, would put out that kind of um, kind of dabbles in themes with mental health I feel like this one would would probably be the best one to do it in so. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they touched on that a bit in there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, the cast looks good. The right. the trailer alone just just gets me excited. Even before that, they, there was a trailer and they just announced that they were gonna make a show. I kind of knew a little bit about Moon Knight. Kind of the only thing I really knew about him was that he was essentially, you know, like Blake said the Marvel version of Batman with like more supernatural. Um, and he, he's kind of like in his truest form, he's, he's like a rated R kind of character. You know, he, he, he belongs, oh, yeah. he belongs in, in that category with like, uh, with blade and Punisher, um, and ghost rider for sure. So, um, it's definitely going to get, it's going to be more uh, gritty feel to it. So excited. And I think we all saw that when, some of the training got leaked or posted of Oscar Isaac was doing and you could just tell in the training he was a lot more I guess violent you could say I mean he was punching people it looked like he was either stabbing or shooting someone in the head at the end of the video like and seeing that again got us excited that Marvel hopefully isn't gonna Disney this and make it rated G and have him be completely watered down from what he truly is which is like Alex said, just what we need in the MCU. Some fresh air of the, the Punisher, the Blade, the Ghost Riders of the world that are darker, doing things their own way, but they still have their place in the MCU, I think. Um, I think really, just kind of want to mention some of the supernatural stuff. We saw in that, I believe it was that lady that opened the elevator we saw like a monster or whatever running to i believe that might have been kanshu it is i'm not sure it is that's, that's what it kind yeah, of yeah it, it had it like that like beak kind of figure it, it looks exactly okay. like him in the comics so i saw there was a shot of him but i wasn't sure if that was the same like monster chasing after him there it is um yeah but there was a shot of kanshu of with his like comic book accuracy so I guess that is so we will see Kanshu again we could kind of see that be in a way the big bad because in the comics Kanshu like I said basically tells Moon Knight like you're my vessel for justice I'm gonna tell you to do something you're gonna do it um and there have been some parts in the comics where Kanshu is kind of bad in a way and sending him on bad missions I guess you could say and he kind of ends up like revolting and leads a team against Kanshu there's some more Kanshu is more of a good person, and I mean not good person, but it's kind of right in his actions of where he's sending him. Right, and it's not, and um, from what I understand, because I also kind of 
read up on Kanchu as well. Uh, he's not a sen he, he's not a bad person. He, he's not a good person. He's not a villain or a hero. He he kind of falls in that category of you know he kind of he has his own um, agenda and he is gonna do whatever it takes to achieve that. And if that means you know killing people, <laughs> you know and you know kind of to get out of their way and you know to kind of get to his main goal um or if that means you know uh doing the right thing and then kind of somehow making his way there it doesn't matter he he is going to do what whatever it takes so um he doesn't essentially fall under either or um which honestly it kind of uh makes it a little more interesting because there's not like a clear concise thing saying yes this guy's a villain or this guy's a hero you know, I can I can appreciate when when um, when there's, um, I guess, for better lack of words, the antagonist of of the story, right? Um, in this case, Mark in Mark's perspective, or whoever the the, the main uh, the, uh, person will be uh, throughout the show, in his eyes, the main antagonist will be um, either Conchu or Ethan Hawke's character, um, but in conscious eyes uh, he is not the the antagonist he he's a protagonist he's the, the main character he has uh this this guy who who is now his basically his executioner or his mercenary at will that he can just send out and, and do, do stuff with um so um I, I i can appreciate it when when there's a character who who you know doesn't fall under a, a certain category you know it, it kind of makes them more more interesting no, I'm definitely, I'm excited that we are going this more supernatural way. Um, at the end of the trailer, like I mentioned earlier, we saw Moon Knight beating up on what looks to be a werewolf, I believe. It looks like a werewolf to me, yeah. what I was kind of thinking, which obviously gets me excited because that means we are going more into the supernatural world, which is definitely way more Blade, Black Knight territory, um... Along with that, as we saw, he works at a London museum. It's not the same museum, but Dane Whitman, as long I mean, also Cersei, but Dane Whitman also works at a museum in London. So between that, the supernatural ties, perhaps we'll see Dane Whitman or more likely Blade appearance or reference throughout the show, I would or guess. Or maybe cameo or post credit scene. You know, you never know. And, you know, right. I feel like if there's a, a good time for it to happen it'd probably be in the show for sure right that would make sense with the the supernatural ties oh yeah absolutely i mean th this will be like a nice easy way to ease in like you know the yes now there are vampires there were was draculas in here because i mean there's a, a a dracula in the marvel universe so um when, when you have these kind of uh characters like like a like a werewolf uh, in this show it kind of eases people into you know the possibility that yes now we're gonna get a broader we're really going deep in, into the the marvel characters here so um obviously the more the better to, in, in my eyes obviously i still love the avengers but you know there there are other teams other than than the avengers you know there's obviously the different uh versions of the avengers west coast avengers uh the new avengers and then you know obviously midnight suns and so on and so forth you know so um fantastic four x-men exactly so um you know there's a plethora of, of characters that, that they can choose from so um again a breath of fresh air is always welcome uh, in my eyes. Oh, I absolutely agree. And it would be nice to see some kind of Blade reference or post credit scene, something with him just to kind of tie him in to more people. Um, as we've seen, not a whole lot of these have been connecting as of late. So it'd be nice to at least get that connection, but who knows what they'll do with it. Um, I mean, this is just a two minute trailer that has me excited for this show to come out i cannot wait and i just think let's just i think we should all just agree let's just skip february what's in february nothing who cares let's get to march all right let's get to the new batman movie coming out moon Knight. let's just skip february we're done january february you're over yeah i agree <laughs> i think that's pretty much it on this episode um if you guys have any other thoughts or comments on the uh moon Knight trailer let us know in the comments down below 
Don't forget to follow us on our social media stuff as we have a TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, of course, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like if you like this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.